I'm going to demonstrate what you'll be able to do after this video. I've got a melee enemy here holding an axe in his hand and I'm going to shout at him. Now I'm charging my shout and he drops his weapon. First of all, you need to have things that you can drop in your game. It could be items, it could be guns, could be swords, it doesn't matter. You need to have something that holds all that stuff in your game. It could be a character, it could be a vehicle, it doesn't matter. Both the things that you drop and the things that hold those droppable items or weapons or whatever, they are both going to have to have transforms. Luckily for us, as soon as we create a new game object in Unity, it automatically has a transform. The item, the weapon, the sword, whatever it happens to be, needs to be parented to the holder object. For example, if I have an NPC with a gun, I am going to parent that gun to the NPC's hand transform. Parenting the object to the holder is going to mean that that object will follow the holder around and in that position. So for example, if I've got an NPC with a gun in his hand, that gun is going to move as the hand moves. If I just parent the gun to the NPC's character model or the NPC's character game object, then it's not going to behave in the way that I want it to. I have to actually find the hand bone and parent the gun to the hand bone. What's more, if I want a nice rotation on the gun, if I want it to point in the direction that the NPC is pointing, then I have to have yet another transform as a child to the hand bone, which will allow me to rotate the gun in a way such that it points in the direction I want it to. Here's the meat of the video and really how we're doing everything. This item is a, is a child of our item parent in the hand of our NPC. All we have to do to make that NPC essentially drop the item is unparent the item's transform from our NPC's hand. Before anything, just to test this out, all we're going to do is unparent the item while we're in play mode and see what happens. So we unparent the item and we move our NPC our NPC can continue to run around, but our item is stuck there in space. Because there is no force acting upon that item, because there is nothing that moves it at the moment, the only way to make it actually fall to the floor is to add a rigid body. So let's do that. While we're not in play mode and while this item is in the hierarchy, we are going to add a rigid body to it. And we have to make sure that that rigid body is set to is kinematic. This ensures that the object will not fall out of our hands as a result of gravity or collisions with other objects. Now we are going to go into play mode and manually remove the item from the NPC's hand and we also have to remember to untick is kinematic so that it will interact with the world's physics. The reason that the item is dropping through the ground is because it doesn't have a collider. So let's go back into edit mode and add a collider to the item. Let's go back into play mode and manually remove the item from the NPC again. Remember, we have to untick is kinematic in the item's rigid body, and that should be it. An issue that you're going to run into with this system is that when you unparent the item, it will sometimes still clip through the floor even though it has a collider. In order to correct that, we're going to go back to the item's rigid body component and change collision detection from discrete to continuous speculative. In my game, I use a very simple script to activate droppable items. Let's take a look at the script. All I have is one public method called drop, where I make sure that the game object that we're dropping is active. We unchild it from its parent, and then we call this on drop unity event. I use a unity event because I may not have the same components on all of my droppable items. In the case throughout this video, we've had a rigid body and a box collider. We are going to add two listeners to this on drop event. We are going to add the rigid body to this field and we are going to add the collider to this field. 
With the rigid body, we're going to make sure that it is not kinematic. With the collider, we're going to make sure that it becomes enabled. One way that I use this droppable script is with one of my enemy's health components. When that enemy dies, it fires an event and calls the item holding script that that enemy has. When he dies, he drops his current item. Thanks a lot for watching the video. That's it for today. I really appreciate you guys stopping by this channel. If you liked the video, please like it. If you don't, leave a comment. Tell me why you didn't. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments. It's possible that I've made some errors here. Let me know about that too. If you need a little bit more guidance on what to do with this, drop a comment and hopefully someone can help you out. I'm always looking at the comments on my videos. If you guys want to support me and support the channel, then please subscribe, ring the bell. You'll get the latest content and I'll be able to feel better about myself.